Okay, we're live on eChurch on Monday, April the 8th, and want to get straight into a, a good word, a good discussion tonight. Uh, uh, most of my uh, uh, hearers, most, most people that watch this, they're, they're people who love the message of God's goodness and the grace of God. Hey, good to see you from VA, Virginia. We've got some East Coasters, Mountain Timers, Central Timers. Hey, uh, uh, there's been a lot of times we've had people from Europe watching. They've had to stay up till the middle of the middle of the night over there. But um, people uh, that understand or love the message of God's goodness. And okay, hello from Canada, international broadcasting tonight. And they love the message of God's grace. And so I've got a discussion on a couple of things that. Uh, go hand in hand with it or maybe you don't think so but I want to talk about obedience and I'll I'll keep talking when you guys quit shouting I know I'm, you're getting all excited about that and I want to talk about submission to authority and uh, right off the bat I'll tell you I'm not I'm not going to uh, come down against either one of them but I want to explain it because there's some something biblical that is spoken of about it um, first of all first of all obedience a lot of times um, those of us that love the message of God's goodness and grace we don't like to hear a lot of teaching about uh, obedience because with the revelation of grace a lot of times when somebody is is teaching uh, don't even mention those basketball playoffs you got a DVR record it the finals tonight. I have no clue what's going on, but I'll watch it later. <laughs> uh, most of, the, a lot of times, the message of obedience, teaching on obedience, um, it, it 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 comes across uh, and and often intentionally as a, another a works message. There again, you know, you do A, then God will do B, and there again, it's always it, there. Uh, a lot of times, it's taught as as a uh, you know as a, the blessing of God is actually earned by your obedience and so that's why um, uh, a lot of times people don't want to hear about that message but I hope to bring better understanding to that you know the Bible does talk about obedience uh, in Hebrews uh, 5 it actually says that Jesus though he were a son yet he learned obedience by the things that he experienced uh, Isaiah said the willing and obedient will eat the good of the land we, the, you, don't, you don't have to uh, you know, uh, look very hard, and you find that word throughout the Old and New Testament, talking about the about uh, the obedience of Abraham. The Bible tells us to be as obedient children, to live like obedient children. So that word is all over the place, even in the New Testament. But when you look up that word obedience, this gives a real, real good shines a good light on this and how it applies to us in this wonderful life of God's goodness and His grace and his unmerited favor, and his unmerited goodness, and his unmerited blessing, and his unmerited honor and glory that he gives to us. The word obedience there, uh, it give, these are the definitions you'll find. And if you happen to have an app or something that's got a strong concordance, you'll see this real quick. And I'm just quoting. But it, the, the definition of the word obedience is to listen attentively, to hearken diligently, to pay heed, to pay attention. And then you'll also find the words to comply, to obey, to submit. But the biggest part of the definition uh, has more to do with the ears than it does the hands. When we hear the word obedience, we usually think of something we do with our feet or, and or our hands. We do something, we go somewhere. But when you look up the definition, it has more to say about the ears than it does the hands. And it talks about listening attentively paying attention paying heed and 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 what are we getting at here look at it look, watch this we're talking about an obedience to God to, to, obedience to the word now when we're talking about obedience to the word we're not talking about obeying a set of rules what we're talking about is paying the more earnest heed giving our attention to the word of God because what you have in your life and in your situations you've got a lot of noise and and uh, voices coming at you uh, from a lot of different directions especially if you're in a time of, of, of trial in your life 
You know, that's where your battle of faith really is. It's, am I going to hold to the Word? Am I going to believe the Word? Am I going to trust the Word? Well, of course, the only way to do that is to submit to that Word, obey that Word, or comply with that Word by paying attention to that Word. Bowing to that Word, huh? Bowing to that Word and not bowing to something else. Well, yes, it goes from your ears to your head to your heart. But what I want to get is this. If, if the word means to, to comply, obey, and submit by listening and hearkening and paying attention, look at it this way. If we're having a conversation and I say, now, listen to me, or let me tell you something. And when I say that, you lean in and you pay attention you're waiting, you're hanging on my words, you want to hear what I say so you can respond to it. What you are doing then is taking a position of compliance. What you're doing is taking a position of submission, if you will, to hear that word. Now if I say, listen to me, I want to tell you something, and then you say, no, you listen to me, I want to tell you something, then there is no compliance or, or submission there. And this is how we, we, we operate with the Word of God. We take a position of obedience, compliance, and submission by putting our attention on that Word. See, this thing will, 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 will save your life. Uh, there was just this week, just this very week, uh, I was praying for somebody that's very, very close to me. And, uh, and, and, uh, this is the situation where, I mean, you know, we're talking to the doctors there, visiting in the hospital room, and things have been getting worse and worse and worse, and finally, the doctors started talking about life support, you know, and, uh, you know, what kind of decision is, is going to be made about, the, about, about that, and, and, and it's just getting worse and worse, and the doctor was acting like they don't know what's going on, and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to lose somebody I really care about, and, uh, and, and I mean, and I'm just thinking about, my goodness, you know, what's it going to be like without them around? And, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm imagining the funeral. I'm, a, You know, all these thoughts are coming at me. It wasn't like I was thinking, but all these thoughts were coming. It was coming from, it was, it was like, you know, I can see their funeral. I could, I could see the, the, the sorrow of their, the, their, their loved ones and, 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 and everything. And it's just like, oh, you know. And in the midst of that, and there was, I was feeling a lot of, pain and sorrow for them and uh, because of course we'd already been praying all this time but it wasn't getting better it was looking worse it looked like you know people do go <laughs> and it looked like this was going to be it and, I, and, and I, I heard the word of the Lord say with God all things are possible and when I heard that voice of the Lord that word I stopped and I paid attention to it I paid heed to it in the midst of all the other voices coming, spiritually speaking, I focused on that word and I bowed on that word. And I became obedient in that sense to that word. In other words, I complied to that word. I submitted to that word in humble obedience to that. And when I did, all the other big noises that were, that were hollering at me, they began to disappear and become very dim and very, and, and very nothing. And that word took the ascendancy because of the position that I took with it. I took a position of compliance, obedience, submission, hearkening, paying attention to that word. Yes, in obedience to that word, that's exactly what it is. When you Thank you, Jill, that, that says it really good. Obedience is believing God and not, not something else, not the negative. And so that's where our obedience is. So when we're talking about the blessing of obedience, we're talking about putting, giving the word its rightful place. And that moves us over into this other area uh, that I want to talk about, about being under, under authority. Since we're talking about obedience, compliance, and submission. Now you remember Jesus, uh, a centurion uh, had called him to come pray for his servant. A centurion was a Roman uh, captain over a hundred men and uh, and he sent his messengers to tell Jesus he says now listen don't come to my house because I'm not even worthy to talk to you and I'm certainly not worthy for you to come, come under my roof but just speak the word only and my servant will be healed right we know that story 
and, and this is in Luke chapter 7, verse 8. And, and the Roman soldier said, For I also am a man under authority. And I tell this, and I have soldiers under me. And I tell one to go, and he goes. I tell one to come, and he comes. Now look at the, the, the layers of that there. <clears throat> he says, All you got to do is speak the word. Send the word, because I understand how you work, Jesus. Because I also am a man under authority. And I'm a man under authority, and I'm a man that has authority. So I know all you got to do is speak. In other words, he's recognizing Jesus. I see how you're doing this. Remember, people were asking him all the time, the religious leaders, by what authority do you do these things? Why is it that you break the Sabbath? Why do you do all these other things? Why, 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 why? And this Roman centurion says, I get it. I understand it because I'm also under authority. And me being under authority, I have authority. And I recognize Jesus, that you're under authority, and you have authority. Now, what are we, what are we we're talking about here? Now watch this. Look at this word, authority. Because there again, we know that that is a term, like obedience, that has been used and abused, right? Sometimes there have been such extremes that it has actually hurt people, has destroyed families at times. Um, people have committed suicide over it because of the wrong understanding of being under authority in the church. And I'm not against being a part of the church. I'm not against having pastors. I, you know, I, please understand that I love the church. I'm a part of the church. And 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 love the the, the positions and the ministry gifts and all that. But you understand what I'm saying? It, it, there have been many times that it, it can be abused. It can be an abusive teaching and abusive terminology. The word for being under authority. The authority that the centurion used when he said, I'm under authority, is the word exousia. And the word exousia means this. Now think about, watch this. I'm under authority. I'm under, the word is privilege, capacity, freedom, competency, It's 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 uh, translated authority, liberty, power, and right. That word for authority, it doesn't give us, it doesn't give us the, the definition doesn't give us the picture of being oppressed by something or someone. It gives us a picture of having liberty. I am also a man under authority. Exousia. I'm a man under privilege. I'm a man under freedom. I'm a man under liberty, power, and rights. Why? Because him being a, a captain over a hundred men, that position or that authority was delegated or given to him. And that authority that he was under gave him the freedom, he said, the right, the privilege, and the authority to tell this one to go and that one to come and this one. In other words, he says, what he's saying, what we're looking at, authority is not oppress, oppression. Authority is freedom. To be under the right authority, to be under God's authority, it's freedom. It's liberty. It's right. It's privilege. It's capacity. It's power. To be under the authority of the word that we're talking about, being obedient to the word, taking that position of hearkening to the word, which means that you put the word foremost, that you give it the ultimate authority in your life. And when you are a person under authority, especially when we're talking about the authority of God's word, the word of God is not some oppressive thing. See, when we hear the word authority, being under authority, the mind immediately goes to restrictions. Hmm? I don't want to go to that church because their rules will give me restrictions. I don't want to be under a pastor because that man will try to restrict my life, is what people will say and what we'll think. Some people don't even want to serve God because they think that if they give their life to God, if they give God the authority in their life, that God will restrict them, right? Because to people's minds, authority sounds like restriction. 
But the word has nothing to do with restriction. Thank you, Viz. Very good. It's more like having authorization than being under authority. So the word, the definition has nothing, says nothing even close to being restricted or oppressed or becoming some subclass of person under another class of person. The word author, uh, to, un, authority means privilege. So if I'm under authority, and we're talking tonight, of course, of the right authority. We're not teaching you to be under oppressive authority. We're not teaching you to go find you a Hitler somewhere who can tell you what you can do and what you cannot do. We're talking about God's authority, God's word. And to be under that authority means to be under privilege, freedom, liberty, power, and right. Because every, every word of God is has that sound. The whole thing about, about God sending his word was to heal us and to free us from our destructions. Not to put restrictions on us. That's old religious law kind of thinking. Are you hearing this? Remember when God uh, uh, gave manna in the desert? In Deuteronomy, he told them why he gave them that bread from heaven. He said, I fed you with manna so that you would learn that that's not enough. I fed you with manna so you would know that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I fed you with manna so your stomachs would be full, but you would learn that it's not good enough to have your stomachs full. You need the word of God in your life. You don't live by bread alone. You simply exist from day to day. But a man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Can you hear me on that back, on that back row? Absolutely. You can rest in his authority because his authority... Remember the Bible says in Hebrew, says, His commandments are not grievous. His word that came to us came to give us privilege, rights, freedom, liberty, and power. I am a man under authority. The example I gave you of the person I was praying for this week, I was for a while I was being restricted. I thought the person was going to die. I wasn't feeling very happy and I wasn't feeling very powerful and I was feeling quite helpless for a time. But when I came under that word and I focused on it, I paid heed. I gave attention to it. I hearkened diligently to that word. I came under its authority. I came under compliance, submission, and obedience to that word. And it gave me privilege, right, and power. And I spoke that word and it came to pass. And that person has been totally restored back to normal. Just in these last few days. I went to go see that. I went to go see them in the uh, in the hospital. While I was in the elevator, uh, a, a man walked in. Oh, hallelujah! A man walked in. And he says, "How's everybody doing?" Well, there's a person next to him. And he says, "Looks like my wife's trying to die in the in the of a stroke today." The man spoke up before I could say anything. He says, "Well, that's not going to happen." Just smiled real big. You know what? That's a man that's that's under authority. That man that. You know what? When you're under authority, when you're wearing that authority, that kind of that kind of liberty, privilege, freedom, you're wearing king's garments. Because the truth is, Jesus is the king of kings. He's the king, we're the kings. Right? We're under authority, we live in authority. And those that submit to the authority of that word comply with it, obey it, bow their knee to it, submit to it, they're the ones that have the power. <laughs> they're the ones that have the freedom. They're the ones that have the, that have the authority, the, the rights and the privileges in life, right? They're the ones that get to say things. When I submitted to the authority of that word, that with God all things were possible when it looked like all the prayers had failed and all the, the medicine had failed. When I, when, I, when I submitted to that word, bam, I became a person, not only the authority of that word, but I became a person with the authority of that word. Are you hearing me? You, you like this? I think it's pretty good. 
This so and so. It's okay for the Bible to to talk so much about being obedient when we know what it is. We know what it is when we're talking about about being uh, um, uh, in, in in authority. See, he's the King of Kings, so we are under authority. But being under that authority. Instead of the word authority, let me say it according to the definition. If we're under the king, as the king's under the king, then we are under authority, or we are under privilege. We are under freedom. We are under power, liberty, and right. And do you know what's going on? You know what, you know what creation's groaning for? For the kings to wear their kingly garments. And this is part of what we wear. We put on authority by first being under authority for it's he who is under authority that has authority the centurion said Jesus all you got to do is say it because you're under authority and you have authority I'm, I, I know how that works Jesus said I'm only doing they would ask him all the time by what authority do you do these things Moses said to do this. Why are you doing that? Jesus said, I'm only doing what I see my father do. I'm only saying what I hear my father say. The Roman centurion made a profound statement. Jesus, I could, I could imagine why. Jesus marveled. He says, I've not seen this kind of faith. Not anywhere in Israel. I've been preaching here three years. I've not seen anybody. And understands it like this. I'm not seeing any of that kind of faith. Are y'all getting this? Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you what, this takes all the junk out of some biblical words that have been used and abused, I think. Hallelujah. Because when you're under authority, let me see how... Uh, I like that how how Viz Liz said it there, uh, back there. Said it's more like having authorization, right? But you have the authorization because you have submitted to the authority. Have it being under authority. Uh, a lot of times it's misunderstood. It's been tr traditionally misunderstood as being some subclass Christian in the church. Huh? Right. Yeah, you don't have, but somebody else does. And you can't have any unless you find someone who does. And it never ends. You know? You gotta find someone who does, or else you can't have any. But see what we're but there is a principle that we're seeing here, and it does work on every on on every level. To whom you submit to. We're talking about submitting to the word, to Jesus. You get their you get their authorization. Hmm? A lot of times people are, 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 are finding themselves actually hindered because their faith is all about getting their authorization simply from the man. Are y'all hearing it? See, I, I learned a long time ago that to be a person in authority, to be a, even a person in a sense in the body of Christ as a minister of the gospel, having been a pastor for many years, having an apostolic thing about my life also and have, have many people that, that look to me as a source of, 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 of many things spiritually. I have found out that to have authority in somebody's life does not make you a lord over their life. It gives you, listen to this, to have authority gives you the means that you have the ability to impart not to restrict having authority gives you the ability to impart if you see it like that way it works in a secular world it'll work in business on jobs anything else if you a good leader a good mentor a good minister a good boss is somebody that recognizes if they've been given authority or position that what they have been given is the ability to empower and to impart. There again, that implies freedom, rights, privileges. 
not restrictions. And so many people have missed things about God and the Word of God because it seems like God and His Word are all about restrictions. And a lot of people, most people in the Western world that have heard something about Christianity and have rejected it up to this point, mostly they reject it because God seems like the great restrictor upon their life. I put it off for, for years. I put, I, I, I put it off for quite a, quite a while because I got to the point where I knew that's what I wanted to do. I knew that's what I needed to do. I knew I needed to give my heart and my life to God. I knew that. But I procrastinated for, for a long time because the sooner I gave my life to God was the sooner my, my life would become more restricted was what I thought. I can remember uh, you know, people ministering to me and asking me if I wanted to receive the Lord Jesus right then and there. And even though my heart was crying out for that, I would tell them over and over again, not now, not now. And it was not now because there was always a party that was going on this next weekend. Or there was a concert next month. Or there was something else. And I thought, if I give God my life, He's going to make me so restricted that I won't be able to do anything except go to church and read my Bible and shout hallelujah. Because I saw God as a restrictor. And if I gave Him my life, if I gave Him my heart, if I gave Him the authority in my life, to lead and guide me, then he would only lead me to church, a Bible, and shouting hallelujah. <laughs> but you know what we're talking about. You, find, you have found out that God is the great liberator, the emancipator. He makes your life bigger because under his authority, you're become, you, you, you become a child that's under privilege, that's under liberty, that's under freedom, that's under powers, that's under right. Amen? Isn't that good? God is amazing. God is awesome. Let's have your comments. Let's have your questions. I'll take any prayer requests. I'll take any uh, testimonies. This is E Church Live. How you guys doing? We're kings under the great king. Yeah. So I mean, under the, and a lot of it's just it's a misunderstanding because you know in the church we throw that word grace around a lot. I, I, back, I preached a lot of law when I didn't think I was preaching law and I threw that word grace around a lot <laughs> but see I didn't have my understanding of things I didn't understand things like we're talking about tonight had a, had, had a man's idea of submission and authority had a man's idea of obedience and so you know the Bible says a lot about obedience but so how do we reconcile all of that with the free gift the unmerited favor, the unmerited goodness, the unmerited blessing. How do we reconcile that? Tonight, this is what does that. It's just clarifying the understanding of it, isn't it? Don't you love God? Woo, God is so good. Hallelujah. His commandments are not grievous at all. So, remember that the Word of God is your authority. That's what you bow your knee to. That's what you comply with. That's what you submit to. Not because it's wanting. See, you know, when God sent his word to heal us and save us from our destructions, the whole purpose of God, God creating us even was not so he could have these flesh creatures that could follow his little box set of rules. I'm going to create these flesh creatures with this free will to choose and I'm going to see if I can make them take that free will and cram it all into my little box here. God don't even have no little box. He's big. He's eternal. Come on, somebody. You know, people even use things like this. Jesus, um, you know, the statement where he said, I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. Even most people, when they hear that, they're thinking of restriction, aren't they? I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. And, and people have asked me about it. People in ministry, they say, you know, 
We shouldn't just pray for anybody and everybody. We need to wait until we hear God say something because Jesus didn't say anything unless he heard God say it. And it sounds like, like, like Jesus is teaching us to re, be very restrictive in what we say and do. Well, if that's the case, then why did Jesus say more than anybody has ever said? Why did Jesus do more than anybody has ever done if doing what the Father does and saying what he says is meant to restrict our language and our actions, I say to you that doing what the Father does opens up your actions to any possibilities. Saying what the Father says allows you to say more than anybody has ever said before. Isn't God good? What's your analogy? Sure love you guys. Thank you for coming out to eat church. Hope it's a blessing. Mm hmm That's really good. You authorized him, didn't you? <laughs> You authorized him, and he and he's and, and he's able to do it. You gave him you you give him the power. Don't you love that word? In fact, that same word, exousia, is also is also very 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 often interp uh, translated as the word power, right? The same word for authority. This same word for authority is also. Uh, 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 translated power. In fact, that's 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 the word where Jesus spoke after his resurrection, and he says, "All power or all authority, exousia, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, all authority, all privilege, all freedom, all capacity." All authority, liberty, power, and all rights have been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. I am under that authority. Go ye therefore. You have that authority. I'm under that kind of liberty. Go in that liberty. I'm under that kind of freedom. Go in that freedom. All authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Hallelujah. Yes, I'll pray for your son right now. I've got a word that I'm complying with tonight. I've got a word that I'm obeying tonight. The word that I'm submitting to tonight. There's a word that comes from heaven and not from man. There's a word that comes from heaven and not from the weaknesses and bondages of man. And the word is liberty and freedom. I'm telling you, uh, uh, Colorado, I am... Don't you love the feeling of that power that's on the word, that anointing of God? But I am feeling a power of God operating in your situation there. It happens all the time. Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm believing that that, that that person can even wake up tomorrow and find the taste of that thing gone. I'm seeing that that, that enemy, you know the words in, in, in Isaiah one place, he says, In that day you will look for the wicked one and shall not find him, for his place will not be there. And that's what happens. For every enemy, there's an end of that enemy. And I thank you, Father, for liberty and freedom. I speak that. And I, I thank you, Father, for the power of that and operation. I thank you for liberty and freedom that's happening right now by the power of your spirit and only what you can do. Thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for the, for the liberty tonight. Thank you for that kind of privilege and rights and the authority of the word of God. We give you praise tonight. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, I'll mention that manna again. Well, you know, what I said was God gave them that manna and said the reason he gave it to them is so that they would know that know that that's not enough. Um, really, what I, was, what I was getting at was this, that, that what we live by is every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That word is what causes us to live, and it gives us life. It gives us real life. It gives us kingdom life, the God kind of life. And that word, that word is more than enough for you. And what I, have, what I have found out over the years, this is so true, and it just keeps me going strong in victory after victory after victory, 
is that no matter what you face, no matter how hopeless it looks, that there is always the Word. A Word that is more powerful than anything you will face. We live, we live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Those words of God are life. Those words of God are freedom and they are so big and so powerful. They are so much more than enough to overcome anything. And when you comply with it, submit to it, take a position of obedience to that word. Say yes and amen to that word of God that you see and hear by the Spirit. All the other problems and the trials and the voices of it become very dim and very small. And everything about you starts to comply to that word. Because let God arise. Let God have the authority. Let God arise. And his enemies, hallelujah, they're scattered. I love the word. I love the heart and the word of God. The things of this world don't even compare in stature and in power. So tonight, we comply in every situation with the word. Those of you that are here tonight live and also those watching on video, if you got a situation you're dealing with and it seems hard, and it's bombarding your mind and there's there's doubts and there's fears and there seems to be constriction in your life because of it maybe even some hopelessness in some cases seems like certain things will never change they will never get out of it hear ye the word of the Lord incline your ear to the word of God because his word speaks nothing less than absolute life and victory in your life He's got he the kingdom of God is so superior to the kingdom of man and nothing that this creation can throw at you no problem no sickness no, no disease compares to what God has for you so hear what God says incline your ear to the voice of the spirit and listen to the sound of life listen to the sound of victory listen to the sound of love and faith that overcomes this world it'll help you even though you're a weak vessel even though you've had doubts and fears we're all weak vessels but we don't overcome because we're strong we overcome because we hear and we believe that word God bless you Uh, without looking it up, Cessna, that's in Deuteron about De I'm thinking like around Deuteronomy 8, but I just thrown off the top of my head. It's it's in that area, you know, where he, where, where he talks about that, where he explains why he gave them the manna. Yeah, the way he said it exactly, Cessna, was this. He says, I fed you with manna in the wilderness so that you would know that man does not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God what that tells me very very plainly is it says so you would know that manna was not enough for you you needed the word too yes I sure will I sure will God's got direction for you many times your geographic uh, uh, location is, is, is really tied to a lot of blessings so God wants to lead you and guide you in the right way and I'm praying right now what I'm what I'm saying uh, to you right now what the Spirit of God would say to you that that uh, it'll be well with you you'll know just have peace about it now you're gonna know don't be anxious about it you'll just know you'll just know just like you know when you have fallen in love with somebody and you got no other kind of proof you just know and you're going to know and you're going to know the right time and place and uh, you're going to have you're going to know that the provision the job and everything else it's going to fall right in line see that's the way it's going to be that's the word for you tonight there's great power in having peace and assurance in the God of in God's word for there again when we 
receive that peace and assurance, we've taken a position of compliance and submission to that word. And there's power in that. There's power in taking a position of compliance and submission to it because when you do that, you're under its privileges. You're under its freedom and its authority. Amen. Okay, you found it, so it was in Deuteronomy 8. Okay, any other prayer request uh, tonight? I've sure enjoyed being with you again. I love I love the dynamic of e-church. I love the, that we're able to chat and communicate like this. Uh, I have the best friends in the world, and I'm so glad to be with you on Monday nights, and uh, I'll be back again next Monday. Yeah, isn't that good? Isn't that good? Peace and assurance and all the privileges of being under the authority of that wonderful, powerful word. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. We all, we always want to be a, a blessing, don't we? Amen. Okay. Well, I'm going to hang out for about another minute. Um, if you have any other remarks or anything. And... Uh, I'll let you go for tonight, and God bless you. Thank you for coming out, and I'll see you guys next week. Something I could believe in and looking.